Has this ever happened to you? You're really hungry, so you take your transistors out of the freezer without defrosting them, and then you put them in the microwave. And then you wait, and you wait, and you wait for it to get done. And then when you think it's done, you pull it out of the microwave, and then you even go through the effort of putting condiments on it. But then after you bite into it, you realize, oh, gross. It's still cold in the middle. I think it might be time for you to start thinking about buying a new microwave. Come down to Microwaves R Us. With our microwaves, you won't need to defrost your transistors. Uh, was that the weirdest intro I've ever done? Yes, probably. Today, I want to talk about transistors. Uh, what can go wrong with them while trying to set them up? And I'm going to put a timestamp here just in case you have a specific problem you want to get to right now. So there are like three big problems I see while trying to, uh, while roaming through forums for like transistor help. Quick side note, uh, my background looks so different and weird because I finally got a green screen. Anyway, uh, problem number one, and by far the most common one I've seen out there, is I just have no idea how to set them up and I've gone through a bunch of transistors trying to figure it out. Problem number two is uh, everything appears to be set up correctly, but it starts smoking. Problem number three has to do with MOSFETs. Um, I plug everything in and everything is set up. I can get it to turn on but I can't get it to turn back off. For the first two, I'm going to be working with a BJT, a bipolar junction transistor. If you wanna learn more about like the science behind them, I made a video about it, you can go check it out. All you really need to know for this video is that there are two types, an NPN and a PNP, and it acts like a switch. In an NPN, current goes into the collector through the emitter to ground, if there's enough current at the base. Otherwise, no current flows. PNPs are completely opposite backwards uh, current goes into the emitter through the collector to ground if there's enough zero volts at the base. So the base has to be supplied with ground. Let's go ahead with number one. Uh, I'm going to start off with an NPN. So this is the setup so far. Um, I have an N channel, an NPN, and then an opto isolator. I'll get back to that later. Um, so every transistor has a part number. For this one, it's on the flat side. But you're going to want to give that a Google so you can find this transistor's pinout. Uh, you're going to want to do this because every transistor uses different pins for different things. Like some put the base on the right pin and some put the base on the middle pin. There's a lot of variation. But once you know the pin out, you can start plugging stuff in. So this one's part number is a BC337. Um, it goes collector, base, emitter from left to right. And uh, these, when I was younger and not really well versed in conventional current. This next part really confused me. And it also, uh, I really, I burned through a lot of transistors. With these NPNs, for example, I would think, okay, so positive current goes in the collector through the emitter to ground. So you hook up the collector to negative because that's where electrons come from, right? And then emitter would be positive because that's where electrons go. Oh, okay, got it. And then ground goes to middle pin. Uh, no. I mean, chemistry really ingrained that notion of current flow into my head. It took a while to get used to conventional current. Very basically, current, uh, conventional current is like regular current flow, but backwards. An easy way to deal with conventional current is uh, there's a positive terminal and a negative terminal, right? So positive current comes out of the positive terminal and zero volts is ground. It uh, sucks up electrons, even though that's completely backwards. Uh, I know this can be confusing and annoying, but you know, the convention for the electrons charge changed to negative in the early 18th century, or was it the early 20th century? Uh, anyway, applying this to our NPN, the collector goes to positive. So I'm gonna put that down right here and then connect the collector to the five volt rail. The base gets five volts and is controlled by a digital pin, but it only gets a tiny amount of current, so I'm gonna put a resistor there. I mean, BJTs are what's known as current controlled, which means they need current going to the base, but they only need a really small amount. You'll burn them out if you give it a lot of current, so. I'm just gonna put a resistor there, maybe like 220 ohms. And the emitter usually goes to ground, AKA the, uh, the negative terminal of a battery, but it can also function as the input for, for something. So you can connect the positive leg of like an LED to the emitter, and then the negative leg is going to connect to ground of my Arduino. So right here, let me just go through the code real quick. Um, we're initializing LED at pin three. You gotta do pin mode. We're setting that LED as output. 
very simple stuff. And then in the main loop, we have uh, digital write. So it's uh, it's on the digital pin, digital pin three. So uh, pin three, it can be used as analog, but you know, for digital write, it's very simple. You either write it as high or low. So we don't need any fancy analog uh, output. Let's go ahead and change that to on because the gate needs to be high to turn on. Let's see what happens. We turn that LED on. High. Nice. Let's turn it back off. Cool beans. So let's clarify what's going on with this LED real quick before I move forward. Current is starting at the five volts, going through the collector, through the emitter, because the base has been supplied with five volts, and then it is going through the emitter, which as far as the LED is concerned, that emitter is the positive rail. It, it is supplying the incoming current. So the positive leg of the LED goes to the emitter, and then the current flows through the negative leg of the LED, and then it goes to ground. One thing I'll see people do when they're kind of new to BJTs, uh, they'll try to introduce a new power source for just the base. Like for example, they'll try to use an external nine volts for just the collector to the emitter, and then they'll use a digital pin from the Arduino for the five volts without connecting the grounds together. And I'll tell you why that won't work. See, there is a potential between the collector and the emitter, but they're separated by the base, which in this case has an incomplete five volts. As far as the Arduino is concerned, there is no potential between the emitter and the, the uh, hypothetical five volts coming from the Arduino. If there is no ground for the five volts, then the five volts wasn't there to begin with. See, current needs voltage to perform. Uh, it needs that potential energy to push it through. So without that potential there, there is no current from the collector to the emitter. Uh, if you were gonna try that setup, you would have to have five volts at the base and you would have to have the Arduino's ground connect to the nine volt ground. On to problem number two, uh, they heat up or they even start smoking sometimes. Uh, I think if it is getting really hot or even smoking, uh, it's either because A, you have it hooked up wrong or B, whatever you're trying to control is drawing too much current. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, here, I have a giant coil of wire. So let's take this LED out. Let's turn back on this GoPro. So before I get started with this, I'm actually gonna get um, my opto isolator here because I like my computer. Opto isolators, they basically separate the high power stuff from the low power stuff. And then uh, this is my external uh, nine volts. The yellow wire for some reason is my positive and red is negative. Let's start plugging stuff in. This is the anode. So I'm gonna attach it to like pin three and then the cathode goes to ground. So uh, that would be the emitter pin, and that is the collector pin on the opto isolator. So my middle pin is gonna go to the emitter, and then that is my collector pin, that last pin there. So the input of my coil is gonna connect to the emitter, and then the output is gonna connect to ground, and this is immediately gonna start smoking. So watch what happens. It's getting really hot, it's already smoking. Okay, we get the point. Uh, that's bad. Don't do that to your BJT. So what we could do if we really wanted to be safe, we could put a resistor on the input or the collector of the BJT. So let's see what that would look like. So now we replace the collector pin with a resistor and I'm going to assume that it's going to take longer for this thing to smoke up or the resistor is gonna get really hot. I really wish I had a thermal camera, but I do not. Maybe one day. Yeah, no smoke, it's just getting a little hot. So for higher power applications, BJTs just don't really do the job. Uh, they're good for things like LEDs, but not really good for high current applications. For actual high power switching, you're gonna need MOSFETs. Now I am planning on doing a, a totally separate episode on MOSFETs, but just for the sake of relevancy and importance, I wanted to include one of the biggest problems between humans and MOSFETs. Uh, for this one, I'm just gonna be using an end channel and if you don't know what they are, here's a five second primer on them. They are field effect transistors that can handle much more voltage and current. This makes them useful for things. Uh, primer over. Anyway, uh, one of the biggest problems people have with MOSFETs when they're first starting out is that they can get them to turn on, but they can't get them to turn back off. This usually happens when A, you don't have a pull down resistor going from gate to drain, or B, you have completely destroyed your MOSFET. The way these things are set up, they're set up so that 
even after the voltage is taken away from the gate, it stays on. So in order to get that FAT to turn back off, you need to add a resistor from gate to ground to kind of close the door between drain and source, if that makes sense. But there's a pretty big gray area for what resistor values are okay. Like I'd recommend anywhere from between 220 ohm to 10 kilo ohms. So anyway, here's why I love MOSFETs. Um, you saw what happened when we hooked a BJT up to this big ass coil of wire. Let's see what happens when we hook up a MOSFET. So for this one, it goes from left to right, gate, drain, source. So I'm setting it up just like last time. Uh, the collector for the opto-isolator gets nine volts. The emitter goes to the gate, which is the base for a BJT. I'm just testing it out right now just to see if it'll turn on and off. So I just put an LED there. So, right, I need a uh, pull-down resistor. So that is a uh, visual evidence of why you need a pull-down resistor. So let's turn it back to high. Turns back on, wonderful. Um, so now I'm ready for this coil. So it is on. It's on, but you can't really see that it's on, so I'm just gonna add a little motor here. It's getting kind of hot. Not really that bad, though. Yep, well, and handled both of those things like a champ. Well, guys, that is all I have for this one. Uh, if I missed anything, make sure to uh, take all of that frustration and confusion and just bury it deep down inside. You're gonna wanna just move on to new things. Uh, just kidding, feel free to leave whatever problems you have down below if you are stuck. Maybe I'll do a part two on whatever I missed. Anyway, thanks for watching, bye-bye.